Rick Santelli here, live on the floor of the CBOE with a special guest today, Dan Close of Nuveen. Topic, munis. Dan, welcome. What a great training floor, huh? Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Rick. All right, 2024, a lot of things are different than last year. And one of the big differences, especially in the muni space, is the flows are starting to look a little bit more aggressive. Maybe you can tell me what investors are looking at to make it less volatile and more optimistic with regard to inflows. Yeah, we've seen four and a half billion in inflows so far this year, which I think is great, especially given the volatility we saw in 2022, 2023. But I think investors are taking a step back, looking at the uh, tax exempt market and saying, I could get more yield on a tax equivalent basis by being in munis than by being in mortgages, by being in corporates, agencies, govies. And I think they're taking a look at that and saying, I want to lock in yields right now because we're at the highest level in yields to start the year since 2011. So this really isn't necessarily about an election year 2024 or maybe current tax policy that may change the next several years. Just on the surface right now, that tax advantage puts it competitively with corporates and govies. That's right, that's right. And, and the tax advantage, it is the eighth wonder of the world. It is truly how we get our infrastructure financed. It's something that really does make a difference, but it is a very high yield when you look at it on a tax equivalent basis. And so if you think that taxes are going to go up, the value of the muni exemption only goes up. If you think the government is only going to finance these deficits with... Well, what about supply? Now, you bring up a good sure, point. Sure. One of the things that makes me nervous about interest rates in general going up, which means the price of treasuries and corporates may go down, is because we have so much debt and we're right. have so much treasury issuance. Right. How is that in the muni world? Yeah, it's, it's completely different. In the muni world, we've seen the muni market only grow by about 5% cumulatively since 2009. That's less than one half of 1% a year. You know, compare that to treasuries. Three and so a half times. So treasuries is what, a $26 trillion market? $26 what trillion are we talking about with regard to munis? Four trillion dollar market and a market that's actually been shrinking over time because more bond calls, more bonds being matured than new issue paper. And what about the Fed? Now, everybody is going crazy over whether it's one meeting or another meeting. Ultimately, you have people out there that say maybe they're not going to lower rates at all if inflation's sticking. We have inflation data tomorrow. Right, right, How right. does the Fed future with regard to policy affect muni positions now? Yeah, so if you look at the last time we even had a whiff of the Fed looking to, tri looking to cut rates, it was really the, the fourth quarter of 2023, munis went up 8%. So we keep on telling investors munis don't need to do much in 2024 to have a very good year because of these elevated rates. But if the Fed does cut, Three times is what we think it's going to be in 2024. We do see a rally because cash becomes more expensive. Oh, absolutely. You, know, you, you look at what T-bills are yielding. You look at what uh, money market funds are yielding. If it all of a sudden becomes more expensive, we think those investors migrate over into the muni market. Now, what about credit risk? Now, let's separate that into two issues. The default issue, let's get to in a minute. But with regard to ratings and upgrades right. and downgrades, what's that landscape look like? So for the last three years, if you look at Moody's, S&P, they've upgraded four to one, four times more than downgraded. And that's just because of all the COVID money that's come in. Five rounds of COVID financing, the last round, the CARES Act. 350 billion came into the municipal market. All right, so you brought up a great point. Now, we're running closely out of time. Uh, COVID money, lots of states, lots of cities, they took this money. Some of them did good things with it, some of them not so good. California now is what? Anywhere from 48 to $60 billion deficit. But I was shocked. Illinois seems to be doing pretty good. Your final thoughts on why Illinois might be a good place to look for potential muni investments? Illinois is just, they're on the right path right now. If you look at the state, three years of budget surpluses, they actually have a rainy day fund for the first time since 2004, more than $2 billion, and the spreads are still there. You could go in and pick up some decent value.